Hello, hello, hello. This is Thinking to Think, the podcast that explores critical thinking and complex ideas. I'm your host, Michael Antonio Aponte, also known as Mr. A, or the author M.A. Aponte. And today we are delving into a topic at basically a lot of things that that have been popping up without naming it, and that is intersectionality. What is it? Why do we see it? And why do most people don't know what the word even means? So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's first define intersectionality. Now, intersectionality is connected to critical theory, a postmodernization concept. And intersectionality is a concept that emerged from the field of critical theory particularly through the work of Kimberly uh, Crenshaw. Uh, she was known as a legal scholar and a civil rights advocate for, uh, for my more conservative and libertarian independent uh, thinkers. There, she's pretty much one of the founders of a lot of the progressive movements that we see today. In any case, particularly um, with Kimberly Crenshaw's uh, research, uh, it provides a framework for analyzing how various aspects of a person's identity intersect and interact, potentially leading to unique experiences and disadvantages. These aspects of identity can include, but are not limited to gender, race, class, sexuality, disability, and more. Um, this can be a history. So basically you'll hear them discuss, uh, about, uh, of who owns the land of whoever, one race or another, who was there first, things like that, stolen land. Those are all part of intersectionality and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, the core idea is that individuals don't experience oppression or privilege in isolation, but rather these experiences are intertwined and influenced by multiple a- aspects of their identity. Now, a um, little backtrack, let's backtrack a bit. Roots in critical theory. Critical theory originating in the mid 20th century is a philosophical and sociological framework that seeks to critically examine society, institutions, and power structures. Critical theory is really based off of an expansion of the Marxist idea. It it really genuinely did come from the Frankfurt School. Uh, It aims to uncover underlining dynamics that perpetuate social hierarchies and inequalities. So basically, uh, oppressors versus oppressed. Critical theorists encourage questioning the status quo by delving into issues that might be overlooked or normalized. Intersectionality is an extension of these ideas, bringing a focus to ways in which different forms of oppression intersect and shape individual experiences. In other words, when you see um, a progressive uh, group for, let's say, as you see in the news, Queers for Palestine, that's an intersectionality because here's a group that is supposed to advocate for um, for queers and LGBTQ community uh, advocating for something that really doesn't pertain to them directly, but more so indirectly. That's that intersectionality portion that I, I just mentioned. So um, intersectionality and progressives. Um, progressivism is a political and social ideology that seeks to address and challenge systems systemic injustice and inequalities remind you this podcast we're defining everything and then we're going to break things down intersectionality has been adopted by many progressives as a tool to better understand and combat these issues it provides a way to acknowledge that some individuals face compound forms of discrimination due to the intersections of their identities Progressive, uh, progressivists often use intersectionality as a means to highlight and recidify the complexities of inequality in society. In other words, they use intersectionality to highlight that they're oppressed also. So when you 
see, you know, protests um, for uh, Black Lives Matter, and you see um, another group that is not black but is progressive, and they're marching alongside because they're highlighting an oppressive, an oppression, that's an intersectionality. So that's how you see this kind of things online where it's like, what does this group have to do with the other group? But yet they have a same cause, the same idea. It all branches out from the critical theory. Critical theory uh, is your um, it's is your feminism uh, movement, queer theory, uh, critical race theory, like all these like socialist theories branch off of critical theory. Think of it like a web. Critical theory is the, uh, is one of the sources. Critical theory comes from postmodernism. Postmodernism comes from the the um, uh, modernist theory, but also Karl Marx and the Frankfurt School and socialist movement. That's why all these theories are very well connected to socialist ideologies. They're connected. That's they're they're literally the root, the genesis. Now. Um, I want to highlight, and because we are critical thinkers, we're going to push personal ideas aside, and I'm going to highlight from their perspective, from progressive views, on the benefits of intersectionality. Remember, it is important as critical thinkers, we need to see the other side's ideas. We need to understand them. Okay? It is so important to do that. Now, um, we'll start with inclusivity. Inclusivity, intersectionality encourages a more inclusive approach to social justice as it recognizes the diversity and complexity of human experiences. It emphasizes the importance of understanding and addressing the unique struggles that marginalized individual, uh, individuals face. Um, in short, we want everyone included because not everyone because a lot of people have been excluded. Policy insights. By taking into account the intersections of identity, intersectionality provides insights for the development of policies and programs that can address inequalities more effectively. It helps policymakers understand that multifaceted nature of discrimination and oppression. So, Basically, that is your um, um, systemic racism ideas comes from policy insights. Social awareness. Intersectionality has contributed to raising awareness about the interconnectedness of various social issues. It encourages individuals to consider not only the surface level problems, but also the underlying structures that perpetuate inequality. That is your um, inner bias that you're not aware of, like your inner racists. The, that, that's what they're referring to, the social awareness. So, in short, you have your inclusivity, policy insights, and social awareness. Inclusivity is you're just absorbing, you know, you're just understanding that every not everyone is included and you got to include them. Policy insights, there are certain systemic things that have been put in place to put other people down and social awareness that we all have inner biases and we need to acknowledge them and root it out through other means. What, what those other means are depends on who you're talking to. Now that I got the, their perspective out of the way, let's talk about what we have seen through, and you know, it's going to, we're going to give them criticism because in the past, I would say, 15 or so years, we have seen the outcome of these ideologies come into place. And it's not great. It's not good at all. I'm, I'm being, uh, being nice about it. So let's start with the first one, identity politics. Before I begin uh, with uh, identity politics, I want to first do a quick plug-in. The Logical Mind, Learn Critical Thinking to Make Better Choices. This book is one of my first uh, of many books to come, and it focuses 
on developing your critical thinking skills. This book is meant to test your mental faculties and help you develop a logical mind. At the end of each chapter, you'll find a set of challenging questions designed to get you to think critically. Put what you've learned into practice and strengthen your capacity for reason. So please check out my book, The Logical Mind, Learn Critical Thinking to Make Better Choices. It, I am going by author M.A. Aponte, and you can find it in your favorite bookstore, Amazon. You can get Kindle. If you have Kindle Unlimited, I highly recommend picking it up and doing the full read. Definitely do the practice on at the end of each chapter. I promise you, you will not regret it. Now back to the show. I'm going to say it as formal as I can. Critics argue that intersectionality can lead to the development of identity-based politic, political, excuse me, political factions. They suggest that this framework may inadvertently encourage people to prioritize their own group's interests over those of society as a whole. We have seen this happen through elections, both local and federal in the United States, as well as in other countries, uh, other Western excuse me, Western civilized, uh, civil, civil, civilized nations, like democratic nations. We have a very split uh, culture and is bled into politics where now one group cannot support an individual of another group because it doesn't fit the, the ideology or the team. You have to, and it's it's treated almost like if it's baseball or football teams, where no matter what, you just have to dislike the other team. That is where we're at. Uh, we see it. It's sad, but this critique is valid. We have seen this firsthand, and this can lead to polarization and division, as it may create as a us versus them mentality, pitting different different identity groups against each other. Now, critics worry that a focus of identity policy can hinder broader cooperation and solidarity across groups and can sometimes be exploited by those seeking to sow division. We have, again, we're seeing this, we're experiencing this. It's a valid critique. Another valid critique is oversimplification. Some critics contend that intersectionality is in its uh, attempt to highlight the intersections of various identities can oversimplify complex issues. They argue that it reduces the multidimensional and nuanced nature of human experiences to a series of categories and intersections. This oversimplification can lead to a lack of depth in the understanding of individual experiences and challenges. In some cases, it may even perpetuate stereotypes or create a binary view of privilege and oppression that doesn't fully capture the complexity of real life situations. We're again, I have, I am fortunate enough to have lived in um, New York City most of my life. And what I have seen is that humans are complex. Um, not every person of color had exper has experienced or has even the, um, the ancestors of slavery yet people are categorizing this as oh you're a person of color oh you were oppressed oh you don't know you're oppressed and that is oversimplification plus it hinders the idea of a growth mindset where people can get out of their means get out of their situation because it's oversimplification now, let's move on to the next one. Practical challenges. Implementing intersectionality in real-world contexts, such as a policy development and governance, can be complex. Critics argue that it's challenging to create practical and effective policies that account for all possible intersections of identity. There are limitations to how detailed the specific policies can be while remaining administratively manageable. This is can create a gap between the theoretical ideas of intersectionality and the practical challenges of implementing it on a social 
societal, excuse me, scale. Now, practical challenges, I would say, is an understatement. Most of these ideas come from academia. They come from the universities. It is easy for someone who went through grade school, go to college, get their bachelor, uh, bachelor's, excuse me, and go to their master's because they didn't want to, you know, they want they didn't want to go into the real world. They had nothing, no no prospects, and then decide because they have no prospects because they studied, I don't know, medieval art. They do another degree, and then another degree, and before you know it, they're they're university professors, they're doctors with, you know, and their only experience is academia, and yet they. Because of their lack of experience in real world situations, they cannot grasp the ideas of concept and basing off of reality. They just don't get it. That's why you see them frustrated when they're being uh, interviewed in in corporate media. It's it, it's sad, and it's somewhat. And I'm gonna be, and I'm, I may be offensive, but I'm gonna say it. It's somewhat pathetic. Because to dictate societal norms when you did not live in that society because you're in a ivory institution is mind-blowing. That's why it is important. I mean, I'm not saying education is important, but I'm saying that people that live in the real world should also take ownership in their society and be and take moments from their personal lives and be part of societal decision making whether it's taking a sabbatical running for local election when i say sabbatical I mean a break from your job um even if it means taking a pay cut um you know knowing who your local congress person is things in that nature but I, I did a major digress in a rant. But that's because I'm, it's very frustrating to, to see what I see. In any case, um, another critique is division. Some critics express concerns that the emphasis on different identity categories and their intersections might inadvertently foster competition for limited resources and attention. This competition can create divisions among marginalized groups, potentially undermining collective uh, efforts to combat systemic oppression. In some instances, the focus on specific intersections may detract from the overarching goal of achieving social justice and equality for all. So social justice, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's become a bad word. Before it used to actually mean um, social justice, l the literal sense, but now it's become more of a figurative sense. Um, but has it created division? Absolutely. And I'm not going to harp on that. And I'll go to the last critique, a uh, lack of universality. Another criticism is that the intersectionality doesn't account for the universal aspect of human experiences that transcend identity. Critiques argue that it places too much emphasis on individual differences and not enough on shared human experiences and values. This can be seen as divisive and potentially exclusionary as it doesn't fully capture the commonalities that can unite people across various identities. It is mind-blowing to me of the amount of people that have become um, anti-Semitic when many of the Jewish people of the world don't even live in Israel or not even Israeli for that matter. Um, say what you will about the whole Palestine, um, Israel, you know, Gaza conflict, but make no mistake, de demonizing others 
can lead to chaos. We have seen that in history, and yet people are doing it. And then when I see things such as, again, queer for Palestine, if you go to Gaza and you are in that group, they will throw you off a building. I want you to think about that. You know, a lot of people, a lot of, especially like the con a lot of conservatives, they're critiquing and they're like laughing, like, haha, you know, this is serious. This is very serious. You, the intersectionality that has occurred showed the weakness of the progressive movement where many people are divided within the left over the Israel-Gaza conflict. Now, in my opinion, which, you know, everybody has an opinion, opinions are like butts, you know, everyone has one, doesn't mean you have to smell it, uh, but this is my podcast, so I'll say it. Um, I don't want I don't want people to die. I don't want innocents to die. Um, but yet at the same time, I'm horrified by the way the attack happened in Israel, the innocents. Um, you know, some people say, "Oh, they're not innocent. They're all I, uh, IDF." Doesn't matter what they were. What matters who they are. And those were innocents. So, I'm going to summarize this and close this off. Intersectionality is a concept rooted in critical theory and has been adopted by the progressives to better understand and address complex web of identity, discrimination, and inequality in society. Progressives view it as a valuable tool for promoting inclusivity and social change. Also creates a team and support even if you're not in the same particular groups. However, when we see the evidence in the last 15 years or so, we see how destructive it has become. You know, the riots, you know, the current of the situation, at least current as of uh, October 29th, 2023 of this recording, um, and how the world is getting more and more divided and choosing a side on this situation because they felt like they have to. They've been programmed to be that way for many years prior. So, I leave you with this. Uh, be critical thinkers. Question everything. Um, be careful with groupthink. Uh, and I'm going to make an episode um, about that also. The ideas of groupthink and how destructive it can become. And I hope that you continue to build your critical thinking skills. I will be releasing a course on that, actually. It'll have questions. It'll have It's a whole course. Uh, I am an educator by practice, so it's full-on uh, course that I will be posting in your favorite online courses that you can get with Udemy and uh, Skillshare and what have you. I'll be promoting that more. I'm also working with the uh, the, the Tuttle Twins company. Um, we'll be I'm creating a critical thinking. Um, uh, excuse me, series of courses also directed for teenagers. So if you're a teenager and you do not know about the Tuttle Twins, you should Google it because they are amazing, amazing group of people that want to build critical thinkers. And lastly, please share, like, um, follow, five-star this. It really helps. I put zero dollars into marketing. So all marketing is based off of you guys, the listeners. So I appreciate you, I love you, stay safe, and be well. Thank you for listening. Yeah.